Hello, this is Michael Grant with Applied CAX and today I'm going to be focusing on NX Cam and I'm going to be sharing how to use uh, method groups in Cam to automatically set uh, your stock amount and it can also be used to set your speeds and feeds for a uh, semi-finish pass versus a finish pass. So I've got NX open here and um, the first thing I want to share is um, if you have a CAM uh, license you should have a shortcut here to the machine a manufacturing machine samples. Um, this is basically uh, a tab that can be docked to the side. And in the samples group if you don't have it you can go to um, you can go to your uh, samples uh, directory. So, uh, for instance, your Siemens install directory, and under mock, there's a resource, library, machine, installed machines, and then there's just a bunch of machine examples. So, here um, I'm going to use, uh, in fact, I've already had one open. So, these are a good way to open and uh, look at. Uh, you know examples that are using best practices. Um, ignore the warning. Once it loads into CAM, it'll fully load the assembly. It's it's it has some. Uh, if you were to go into modeling, um, it wouldn't load the entire assembly. But once you go into CAM, it has some customizations in the CAM environment to tell NX where to open the model. So here, um, you know, you have your different views and uh, you'll see videos for more about that but I try to um, cover these views in each of my um, videos that I make uh, they're very important you know machine uh, program order is for ordering operations and, and you'll learn more about this um, but what I'm going to show is if you have an operation uh, where you're um, machining say a wall um, so we have this, uh, got to find it here, floor wall top, uh, the profiling of the top. And let's say we wanted to, um, you know, change how much we're cutting between a semi finish and, and finish pass. And then we wanted to, uh, have the speeds and feeds different based on our, um, what we've set for that particular cutter. So, uh, what I'll do is I'm in the methods group here and this is where um, you have groups that define you know your they define your stock value so a finish group has a zero stock meaning every operation under it will have zero um, and this is nice because you can reset your um, stock amount and then you can also set tolerances and so a lot of times um, as I customize these, I'll, I'll put it in the description so I know like if I want to have a finish group that has a higher um, tolerance than another group, um, I can kind of drag operations between them. Certainly your finish is zero gonna, uh, normally going to have a zero stock, but you know, you could have on your semi finish, you could have different um, stock amounts based on, you know, when you're doing small cutters versus large cutters uh, for finishing. Um, you might want to have a different group of um, a method for semi-finish uh, for cutters that um, for when you want to leave less stock when you're going to go back in and finish with a small cutter. So here we have nothing in the semi-finish group and so um, I'm going to take this profiling operation that's finishing the wall and uh, you know here just in case it's been set differently I'm going to say set machining data and it looks like it was already set. Now, um, just to make this more clear, I'm going to add uh, finish onto the end. And then we're going to copy that. You can control C or you can right click copy. And I'm going to go to the mill semi finish group and say paste inside. Now, because this um, change, it changes, this is order of operation, so things that are looking at stock after this are um, wanting updated now that we've made a change to our uh, program order group and so then I'll uh, you know rename this maybe uh, semi finish 
There we go. And so if we go into this operation, just basically co um, you know, copy and paste. If we look at the main group, uh, you'll see we're now leaving stock. Um, so between uh, the one we copied, where we had uh, this, sorry, this here, and we have zero stock. If I close that and open the same operation, it now has uh, 0.3 millimeters stock. And so now, if we go to the tool axis, or the sorry, the speeds and feeds, um, and we hit uh, set machining data, you'll see it updated. So it changed our surface speed and our um, cut. Now it also would change um, our uh, step over um, and step down. And so now I'll regenerate this. And you can see in this in this situation, um, you know, this being an example, it has some step downs. Now you could override that part and um, you know say. Uh, You could put zero there and recalculate, and you just have one step down. And so you still can you customize, but I just mainly wanted to show that um, you can quickly repurpose a toolpath and have it um, do you know a semi finish where it leaves uh, material, and uh, then a uh, it also updates the speeds and feeds. So this can be done with a, a Z level. Um, it could be done with uh, any any operation really and, and you can have it um, you know adjust in this case it's adjusting also the um, because it's applied to a part stock it's adjusting the um, floor um, so it's leaving some material on the floor so one way to look at that is um, you know I, I think I, I changed my um, I customized my toolbar here and so at, if you want to customize a toolbar, anywhere at the end of it, um, you can turn on sections. So if they don't have a check mark next to them, you can turn them on and, the, and they'll show up. So I saw under the tools group, um, there's your edit machining data library. And so this is where the speeds and feeds comes from. So I'll go into that, turn that on. You can see this group showed up here drop down and I say edit machining data library and so this is where you set um, you know one method you can do this per tool um, but the suggested method is a mix of tool material cut method and part material um, and then so if we look at this uh, if we go to the geometry view and double click our workpiece we can see that the material we're using is an HSM P20 pre-hardened. If we go back to the tool view, um, or not back to, but if we go to the tool view, um, we can see our operations using this tool here. It's an eight millimeter end mill. Um, really, it's a bowl mill, but uh, in this case, it's been described as an end mill. And it's using a material of HSM bowl nose uh, tie-in coated or talon coated and so we have our um, three things there and I've taken a, a screenshot here to kind of uh, help and so as we go into this um, we could set those um, I just wanted to show how you set those so here's the tool material and then we're in a semi finish method and then the part material was the P20 and so then here you have your eight millimeter. If I sort by uh, diameter, um, it has two uh, scenarios. And so basically, what this is doing is it has a short stick out, so a 24 millimeter stick out, and a 40 millimeter stick out version. Anything that lands in between these, as far as stick out, it will um, adjust by a percentage. And so in this case, I believe we're 27 millimeters on our stick out. Yeah. And so if we go into the operation, the semi finish, 
uh, I guess I, that was why I took a screenshot. So it um, basically <laughs> um, I mean I overwrote the depth per cut which we can go back and hit that again. So now if I pull up the picture, um, we've got our depth per cut. Um, so a, a eight millimeter with 24 stick out is uh, 200 or yeah, 200 microns um, depth and a uh, 40 millimeter stick out. So a longer one is 160 microns. And so it's kind of adjusted that by, by a percentage, a difference. And so it's 195 microns um, per cut. And then the width or the step over 3.6 to 3.24 and it set it at 3.55. Um, and I um, did forget to show the method portion of it. So the method where it gets its method information is under this semi finish. You can see the cut method has a name or a library reference. So right there, it's a library reference. So um, yeah, so that's how um, I'll end this with a, an example of a um, doing the same thing with a Z level. So if we do insert operation, And we pick the Z level profile steep. And then our eight millimeter cutter. And then we'll start with finish. So we'll call this finish. And we'll just pick uh, the cut area. We'll pick the wall and the fillet. Actually, um, the floor wall adjusts to the MCS. In this case, uh, we'd want to drag it down to this uh, rotation where it's normal to the floor. Um, and then we've already got our cut area. And then we could just generate and see what we get. And we could go to our speeds and feeds and set it. So now it'll adjust based on the cutter info, which uh, has not been done very well in this case. Um, but you can also just come here and say cut levels only at range bottom and then generate. And there you have uh, just a cut at the bottom. Sorry, I don't have my uh, 3D mouse here today. So now we have, um, you know, uh, a toolpath not leaving any any stock. So here's the the stock, and you can always separate the floor. So then we'll copy this Z level. Sorry, we'll go to our method view first, and we'll copy. We'll paste it into here. And then we'll regenerate. And we'll look at now, now it's leaving stock. And we'll say zero on the floor. It was a little mad because um, I said only at range bottom, but yet the stock um, had three on the floor and so it was conflicting info, but as soon as I unselect the floor, same as stock, now the floor has zero, 
which is a lot of times what you would do. And so it has just stock on the on the side. So I really like the Z level and the control that you have with that. So uh, there you go. There's info on uh, speeds and feeds. Um, and uh, remember, anytime you know you're in a function like this, you can hit F1, and it will go into more information about that. Um, there should even be uh, an exercise. Um, in here uh, to go through uh, making your own. Uh, Alright, thanks a lot.